Hello, my name is Roger Bomrick. Welcome to Millezima's Wine Memos. We're going to talk a little bit about Syrah or Shiraz. They're the same grape variety. You know, romantic legends uh, have uh, assumed that uh, Syrah was imported into France from somewhere perhaps in the Near East or the Middle East. Uh, it might have been brought, for example, so the legend says, uh, from Shiraz in Persia, or perhaps it came uh, by way of uh, Syracuse uh, in Sicily, in Italy, and was brought by Roman legions when they came uh, to Gaul. Uh, but in fact, now we know that uh, these, in fact, were nothing but legends. And uh, through DNA testing, uh, we find out that uh, Syrah is native to France and is the product of two grape varieties, more or less uh, in that general vicinity of southeast France, namely Mondeuse Blanche and Dorisa. Well, you know, this is a very vigorous vine, Syrah. It performs best, uh, it would appear, on poor soils in hot and dry conditions. Uh, but as with so many varieties, uh, yields are really critical for top quality. Uh, Syrah at its best is a classic variety uh, of great class. Uh, it can be immensely powerful. Sometimes some examples of Syrah or Shiraz are uh, almost unapproachable when young. Uh, but when you keep them, and keeping the best uh, Syrah-based wines means decades in, in some cases, uh, not just a few years, they can be explosive and uh, incredibly complex. Let's look at some of the characteristics of Syrah or Shiraz as we might find them. If we, for example, uh, take a trip to the Hunter Valley, of Australia to very hot growing conditions, we would find perhaps red cherry or red plum in our Shirazes. We might also find something that the Australians call sweaty saddle in those hot climate Shirazes. But I think more typically, uh, we find in um, Syrah grown in hot, yes, but not extremely hot conditions, black fruits. Blackberry is a, uh, an indicator quite often of a Syrah or Shiraz, and in particular, uh, cassis or black currant. Well, uh, Syrah wines or Shiraz wines today are almost always given some type of wood treatment, and it could mean either French oak, and perhaps that oak has been uh, well toasted, and you see a strong mark of vanillin uh, in the wine. Or, if we're talking about, in particular, an Australian example, uh, American oak uh, is commonly employed either entirely uh, or in part in combination with French barrels. And uh, we see very often a coconut element in those Shirazes. Well, some of the other characteristics that many people find in uh, Syrah in Shiraz uh, from cooler growing regions, uh, pepper. From the northern Rhone, we find uh, ink in uh, Hermitage and in Cornas uh, when the wines are young, and uh, beyond that, licorice, black licorice. Well, there's something else because it's curious that uh, perhaps it's simply through the actions of bacteria uh, with uh, wood barrels, but there is something that comes out of uh, many uh, Syrah, particularly Old World, and that's smoked meat. And you notice this more and more as the wines develop in the bottle. Well, last we come to the question of uh, the natural conditions, or the terroir. Here we have a soil cocktail and two stones, specifically from Rhone Valley vineyards in France. These are called Galets. They're found uh, in Croze Hermitage, which is Syrah based along the Rhone River. Uh, they're found in other parts of the Rhone. Uh, what exactly is the role that the soil plays? Well, it's a difficult point to uh, discuss because 
Uh, there is little in the way of science that uh, tells us exactly how soil is linked to the personality of wine. And uh, we really have to rely more on intuition. Uh, we rely on what we see in the finished product to make uh, assumptions about the possible role of soil. Let's look now at some examples of uh, Syrah-based wines. This first one is a Cote d'Iron, and uh, I think most people would assume that a basic Cote d'Iron, such as this uh, excellent Domaine Lafon 2005, uh, is a wine based around Grenache, and that's true, because Grenache, Grenache plays the majority role in this particular blend from the south of the Rhone Valley. Uh, but uh, backing up the, the warm uh, red fruit spice of Grenache, we have the fresher drier uh, black fruit tone of Syrah. So Syrah can play a role as a blender, a very important blender in the south of the Rhone Valley. Well speaking of Syrah, but really in this case Shiraz as a blender, how about Shiraz in combination with Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, this is something that we can thank the Australians for because they discovered long ago, free of uh, the inhibitions of the old world, uh, that why not? Let's combine Shiraz with Cabernet and you have the, uh, the firmer, drier, more olive-toned aspect of Cabernet balanced beautifully by the warm uh, richness and generosity of Shiraz grown in the Barossa Valley here with this excellent bottling from a family estate, Elderton. Staying in Australia, and by the way, uh, there is probably about double the Syrah planted overall uh, in Australia as in France, and in France for that matter most of the Syrah actually is grown in the Languedoc and not the Rhone Valley. Uh, it's the number one red variety in Australia. So here we have uh, another interpretation. We have a very fine bottling, uh, dry farmed, low yields from the Clare Valley, from Jim Barry. This is the McCraywood 2001. Uh, this wine has uh, that licorice that we referred to. It has the wonderful blackberry quality. There's, there's a lot of power in this wine. Uh, this is a very authoritative, uh, impressive wine on the palate and it's beginning to drink well now. Well if there's a classic paradigm of Syrah, uh, historically speaking, it's Hermitage, which uh, is an appellation of origin uh, which has one of the longest histories in France, going back at least 2,000 years. Uh, this Hermitage uh, Marquise de la Tourette from Delas, 2003, is a baby. It would be a shame to drink this wine now uh, because it's showing so little uh, of what it will offer uh, when it comes to maturity. When will that be? Well, frankly, I think you'd have to wait uh, probably 15 to 20 or 25 years for this wine to begin to show the wonderful qualities uh, that, uh, that it has. Uh, and that means that we come to those smoked meat tones. Um, there probably will be a little bit of pepper. There might be a little touch of truffle as well as this wine begins to mature. But easily this Hermitage has a lifespan of 40 or perhaps even 50 years. Last, let's go to California and let's talk about Santa Barbara where there are some truly excellent Syrahs being produced. And this comes from Coupe. Coupe has established um, an enviable reputation in a relatively short period for their outstanding hillside estate Syrah from the famous Bien Nacido vineyard, uh, which produces, by the way, excellent Chardonnay and uh, Pinot Noir as well. But this is a deep, powerful, and very generous Syrah. Uh, it's a wine that can be drunk now. It surely can be aged. I'm not sure if it has the aging potential of our Hermitage, but nevertheless, uh, there's no hurry to drink this wine, and it's going to get better and better as the years pass. Well, let's close our session with a taste of Syrah. <laughs>